All right, so this is, I think, the last video we'll do today uh, related to um, sets and binary operations on sets. And I want to just go over some of the sort of common properties that these operations can have. Um, we'll state these abstractly because these are properties that apply quite generally. Um, which means that we'll, you know, we'll, we'll take the standard math approach where we're going to use uh, letters to refer to general sets and general elements of those sets, and then you can substitute those letters with whatever particular examples happen to fit. Uh, so we're going to so we're going to look at properties for. Um, So we'll call this thing, uh, maybe we'll call it star so we don't have to commit ourselves to um, either addition or multiplication or any particular example. Uh, but there we go, like that. Now it's, it's plus and times and they're stuck together. So it could be either one, right? Um, okay, so it's a binary operation star on a set. Um, well, S is a good letter for set, right? So. One of the ones that we've seen already is this closure property. All right. So the closure property says that if A and B are both elements of your set S, then so is A star B. All right. So whenever you take two elements of your set and you combine them using this binary operation, you get a new element of the same set. Okay, um, that's the closure property. Uh, another important property is the commutative property. So commutative, spell that right. So the commutative property or commutativity, if you, I guess, want to turn it into an a noun <coughs> would be that for any, and you'll find these, uh, so this, by the way, this for any, this in math we call this a quantifier. Um, this is something you put in front of a statement if you want to specify that it doesn't matter which two elements of the set you choose, this statement will always be true. So we want to say that it doesn't matter which A and B you choose, it will always be the case that doing A star B gives the same result as doing B star A, right? Um, so that, that's a property that we know holds for addition. We know it holds for multiplication, right? Um, does not hold for subtraction or division though, right? Uh, order matters for subtraction, order matters for, for division, right? Six divided by three is not the same thing as three divided by six. Um, so you do have to pay attention to that order, okay? Um, a, lot of, a lot of binary operations are commutative, okay? Uh, another, um, those examples we did last time with sets, uh, the union operation and the intersection operation, those are both commutative as well. Doing A union B is the same thing as doing B union A. Um, the next one is called the associative property. Now, the, the associative property is important because, you know, these operations, I said they're binary operations, they take two inputs, they give you one output. Um, but think about addition, right? So addition is binary, you have two inputs, but uh, I'm sure you've all seen plenty of cases where you need to add three or more things, right? Um, so how do you take a binary operation and extend it to three or four or five items that you want to combine using that operation? Well, what you can do, you know, is, is you can sort of do things pairwise. So if I had three things, so let's say I had, um, like an A, a B, and a C that were all in my set. 
and I wanted to combine them to get a single element using this operation. Well, one of the things I could do is I could first combine A and B. And now that gives me something new, right? That gives me a new element of my set. Um, assuming we have this closure property, right? So this is probably something where you need, you need closure to be able to do this. Um, so now you think of that as a, as a single object on its own, right? Once they've been combined, it's a single thing. And if you've got a single thing, you can combine it with one more thing, right? You can combine it with C. And that gives you a result. Um, now, the associative property says that, um, you know, you look at all the different ways that you might do these combinations, the associative property says that they should all give you the same result. Uh, in particular, what it says is that, well, the, the other way you could do A times B times C, if you just had them all listed in this order, is you could have done, or star, you could do B star C, right? You apply it to these two elements first, that gets you something new. And then you take this new thing that you've got and you combine it with A using your operation, right? Um, the associative property says that, so it, your operation is associative if it doesn't matter which elements of your set you choose, so for any ABC, um, you can do this, right? So it doesn't matter if you do uh, A star B and then star C, or if you do B star C and then put the star A out there, you will get the same answer, right? Um, and so this is important because what it really is telling you is that, you know, um, the brackets are, are not essential in this context, right? Uh, so it doesn't matter, you know, if I left out the brackets here, if I just said A star B star C without any brackets, there wouldn't be any ambiguity in that statement. We would know, we would know what it meant, right? Um, but there are examples you, you've, um, there's one you know that's a non-associative example. Let me show you um, an example. And, and an easy example is subtraction, right? If I did, so let's say I wrote down something like this. Uh, 7 minus 3 minus 2. What does that mean, right? Because now there's an issue. If I, if I do this, all right, put brackets there, then I get seven minus, so three minus two would be one, and I'd get six, right? But if I decided to do that, well, then I get a very different answer, right? I get, so I do seven minus three first, I get four, then I subtract two, and I get two for my answer, right? So this is, this is an example of something which is not associative, right? Uh, the bracketing matters. Addition, on the other hand, it doesn't matter, right? If I, if I was doing seven plus three plus two, um, it doesn't matter. In fact, addition has both the commutative and the associative properties, which means that if you're doing a sum, right, it doesn't matter what order you add things up in, and it doesn't, doesn't matter how you group them together, you will always get the same answer, right? Um, so the, these are important properties. It's important to know that you will get the same answer no matter how you organize your information, right? So, um, you know, if you, ha if you know that these properties are there, it gives you a lot more freedom in how you set things up. If these properties are missing, now you have to be very careful when you do some of your operations, right? Um, and a lot of basic number facts that students learn in early years, um, like tricks for, for doing addition, different ways of, say, breaking 10 up into 1 plus 9 or, or, or 5 plus 5 or 7 plus 3, right? Um, for, for solving certain problems, it can be really useful to know that, oh, I could break 10 up as 3 plus 7, or I could break it up as 7 plus 3, uh, and the order won't matter, right? Or maybe I want to break it up as like 1 plus 4 plus 5. There, there might be different scenarios. And so it, it's, it's very important to know that you have these properties, even if you don't know them by name or, or you, you, know, you don't know them formally like this. At least 
you know, you have them working in the background for you, um, making things work. Um, there's two more properties I want to mention, and then we'll, uh, we'll close this off because this is already uh, running a little bit long on time. Um, so certain sets will have an element that's referred to as an identity element. Uh, and, and an identity element is, is a special element in your set that you can combine with something, anything else in your set using this binary operation and nothing happens, right? So identity looks like this. Um, it says that there is some element, let's call it, for some reason we often use E for identity, I don't know why. Um, so some element E in your set such that E star A equals A and also A star E. So you apply it on either side and, and you get the same thing. And that should work for any A in your set. Okay. Um, so there's this notion of identity element which comes up in some cases. And um, so with respect to addition, um, well, the natural numbers, if you start them at 1, they don't have an identity element. Um, 0 is the identity with respect to addition, right? Anything plus 0, you get the same thing. Um, for multiplication, 1 is the identity element, right? Multiplying by 1 does nothing. Um, and one of the reasons that identities are important is that you use identities to define what it means to have an inverse for an operation. All right? Um, so inverse looks like this. Inverse says that for any, let's say, A in your set, There is some other element, and maybe we'll call it, uh, I don't know, um, A with a little hat. Um, eh, why not? Uh, so that if you combine A with a hat, you get the identity. And again, it doesn't matter which side you do it on. Um, you should get the identity, okay? Um, so, again, if you're, if you're thinking in terms of familiar operations, the inverse element, if you're, with respect to addition, the inverse of a, of a number is just it's negative. Um, if you're thinking about multiplication, the inverse of a number is it's reciprocal, right? And, and so if you're thinking about, like, which sets can you do this for, if you're going to work with just the natural numbers, you don't have inverses for either of the two binary operations that you typically use. Um, if you extend to the integers, well, now you have inverses for addition, but not for multiplication. Uh, if, you want, if you want inverses with respect to multiplication, you've got to move to the rational numbers, right? You've got to allow for fractions, right? And so as you ask for these properties, sometimes you do end up, if you want to maintain closure, um, sometimes you have to enlarge the size of your set, right? Um, or I guess I, maybe closure is not the right word here, but uh, if, if you want to have all these properties for an operation, uh, sometimes your set has to get bigger. Okay? Um, now, uh, both addition and multiplication, if you're working over either the rational numbers or the real numbers, uh, they have all these properties. Okay? Um, with one exception, if you're thinking about inverses for multiplication, there is one element that does not have an inverse, and that's zero. We'll go over that. We'll talk about these examples. Um, I think I better stop here because I see that I'm running long on time for this video. Uh, so I, I was going to do an example, but maybe we'll do this in class. Uh, one of the things we want to work through is, is understanding that with inverses, um, inverses let you do cancellation, right? If I have, say, um, a star B, and I wanted to get rid of the A and be left with B. If I have an inverse, right, 
I can I can apply the inverse to this, and you know, as long as I have sort of associativity, I can use the inverse to cancel with A and, and leave me with B. That's sort of, you know. And now you're getting into understanding, you know, basic algebra, solving equations, right? Canceling things from either side. Um, a lot of it, although we don't ever say these things explicitly in grade school, a lot of it relies on having these properties.